We're back. We're live. It's been a week. It's been too long. There's been a lot of people asking about this. I wanted to kind of do it some good justice. There's a lot of people that have been really putting a lot of effort towards identifying good, you know, timing straps and providing a lot of feedback on a on a forum post out there. And I'm, we're gonna give a lot, pay a lot of homage to those people uh, because a lot of the stuff I have discovered with this, I have discovered from going through that content. So we're gonna go through and if anybody that's just joining has no idea what we're talking about, is there's an AMD tweaker tool that if effectively is doing what, well, it's effectively doing what the BIOS was doing plus more um, for like the RX 475, 480s, 570s, 580s, and then getting us some access into making some real-time timing changes with like the Vega 56, 64, Radeon 7. Uh, so bottom line, a real nice update in this time with mining for people that have not, you know, had the time to either modify their cards or just don't know where to start and how to get to it. We're gonna get into all that today. So this is the one that we're looking for, looking at right here. So if we click on this, this kind of gives you the base setup of it to where to go to download and get the latest. So we'll be looking at the, the graphics user interface, but this tool right now is on Windows with a GUI interface, Windows from a command eyed interface, which you'll use when you're setting up your batch files, and we'll get kind of into both of those. The GUI tool is really cool if you want to kind of just look at settings in a graphical standpoint and kind of be able to make your changes in there, save your settings, find one that works, and then be able to export that out. Now, if you're wanting to just launch a bat file, you can also do that, and there's a command line interface version of that. It also is available on Linux if you're making your own OS, and it also has been pushed to Simple Mining OS, Hive OS. This is a very important tool for AMD uh, miners right now and people that haven't the investment time on AMD. So what gets lost in, uh, I would say, all of the different posts here is that, and what most people usually do is they'll say, okay, that's all old news, let's go right to the end. But what you're missing here in the middle is a lot of this reference material when it comes to how do timings work, how does all this work. Uh, you know, as I was starting to pull together kind of an explanation for you all, I kind of went back and was like, well, wait a minute here, everybody's kind of already linked out, not just the raw source code where things are at, but like the actual reference information to be able to like review your timing strap. Um, information such as finding your um, your current, like if you have a RX 580, you have probably a BIOS on here. So essentially you've copied timing straps onto this, get more of an advantage, you'll take it from 25 mega hash to 32 mega hash. There are tools on here that are referenced that you can essentially open that up, get all the timings from those BIOS settings, take this back to stock. If you have a modded card or if you just bought a new card, you don't need to mod it. And then you can use those those new advanced timings now apply them to the card using this tool in memory every time. So it needs to be launched ahead of starting your mining every time you reboot your computer. This is kind of works like a lot like the ETH pill to where you have to launch it and then you let it and then it's running. So like it's not programming your card, it's just correcting the timings in memory in real time. But then when you shut everything down, it needs to get those settings again. It goes back to stock because you're not flashing anything onto the card itself. Same thing with the Vega RX series, R9 series, R7 series, all of them. It's just taking those timings that we're applying. That's effectively what's going on right now. And we can go through here. So we'll hit the GitHub link. Now, when you're on GitHub, I see a lot of people that ask a lot of questions. Hey, I, I'm on GitHub. I have no idea what I'm looking at, right? And you'll see this a lot with the mining stuff. So what you usually have is you have your kind of your readme info here. So that's that readme.md, which is actually right here. This is kind of laying you out what, what's going on and how to build things. If there's binary releases where somebody's taken the source code and they've done the work for you to, to packaging a release, that should be under this little releases tab here. So I'm gonna make sure you guys know how to get there. Once you go there, the latest releases are from the top to the bottom. So your latest release is gonna be right here at the top. Now this was released 22 hours ago and you can see some of the basic bug fixes, did some updates there. So what you'd wanna do is you, most of the time you wanna take the latest version. So in this particular case, we would just download, if you're running 64-bit windows, you'll gra grab that one. If you're running 32-bit windows for some reason, you would grab that one or you could just go straight to the source code. We'll just take a look at the source code real quick before we get into it. And here's all the external dependencies that it pulls. Let's look at source and let's look at the main source for a Sigthor, the subscribe, tier one subscribe, Three months, thank you brother for that. So we can go in here and take a look at essentially the, the raw base code here. And you'll see in here where you see the references of the types of GPUs that are supported. Now you don't have to know anything about code to be able to read code, right? So you can, 
you might not understand the order of operation and how things are flowing, but you can kind of get a basic understanding if you just kind of go through this. And what I mean by that of like, what's supported? You know, what which, uh, GPUs are supported? You know, that might be a question that's not listed there. They said that they added R7, but if you wanted to know, you could open up that CCP file and go through here and then see a basic. Th now, what, one thing I, when I was doing a code review of this last week and I had tweeted out there, I did like the fact that they did a lot of explaining what each of these things were. Um, so if you have no idea and you're just super bored, you can read through this and kind of get an understanding of what's going on with, with memory timings. What most of this tweaking, what we'll see here, and I have some, some notes of what to look for, for various algorithms, because most of what's been covered has been just ETash, and, you know, from Ethereum and essentially Kryptonite, where like Kryptonite matters with like the interleave, the, the, the latency, the lower latency helps with Kryptonite. With memory bandwidth, where your timings are gonna matter for like ETash matter, right? So your timings are very important on that. So you can think of like memory bandwidth is just like lanes on a highway. How much throughput is making it through? How many cars can go through? How much throughput do I have? Cast latency is essentially stop go traffic. I mean, it's like how fast, what's the interleave between two points, right? So certain algorithms matter. And as we start to peel back stuff like you have uh, Ravencoin, RVN, X16R, that's doing kind of a mixed state of different types of algorithms each time. So it's getting a nonce, it's figuring out where it needs, what, what's gonna start the next series essentially and then it's going to roll through 16 algorithms at random right it, it, but when it starts that set so something like this tool you could optimize for various situations in something like rvn to where if you have a set timing certain algorithms are going to perform pretty well because you have it really kind of set up for that but something like this tool because i've seen people ask about what about something like rvn why aren't we seeing rvn numbers on this improving is that you would essentially have to map your various timing changes each time the algorithm tumbles and it starts a new series you would have to figure out the series and then optimally as it's going through pivot those timings and apply upon each algorithm and you may find some advantage and some are just going to be running raw on the core and you're not going to have this huge memory um you know cast latency or throughput advantage because it's mainly on the core itself so there's certain algorithms that are going to take advantage of this tool and some that are not necessarily going to get too much advantage maybe some micro uh, increase um, because of this tool but we'll go ahead and fire this up real quick and we'll show you guys kind of how it actually functions so once you download that if you downloaded it from the releases here which is right here all i ended up doing is just downloading that what i once you download that you open up and you'll see this you will not see these two things these are two things that i was doing is making copies and saving things we'll delete that but essentially this is what you're going to see when you launch if you're in windows on the windows interface he essentially took the the timing features which is on the left hand side here which is all the different timing settings and then you have essentially what you know core control memory control fan control and basic information that's being pulled from the card so as i as i read through these settings this is what we're seeing here is the stock settings on this card so it, it's going to pull the stock settings from each of the every time you plug this in it's not reprogramming your card. I want to make sure that's completely understood. This is, it's going to pull your basic stock settings and it's going to pull all these basic P state for your memory and your core control. We can go through and turn off if you just click the P1, P0, you can turn all those off and you can just affect your back, your end states. You can pull this up and see the settings, but what I like to do is do a GPU Z. I want to be able to see what GPU I'm looking at. So I want to make sure what memory type I have. I want to make sure, you know, what the base stock clocks are. What And this is uh, Samsung memory as we can see here import your values or you can export so if you go through and you set some settings here you can go through so what you'll see out here on the, on the actual forum post you may find your exact GPU, you may see as you're going through here, there's already a lot of reference information here. So if you go through here, you'll see a lot of people that have taken the time and posted their settings. This is the fun part of being able to do this. You download the tool, you find a setting that's kind of working, you make some tweaks, and then you post your results. That's how people kind of see, hey, this works for my card. Maybe my memory was a little better. I was able to get a little more out of it, and I made these changes to the settings. You'll see a lot of those type of posts under this import values so I have a few saves here and I will add these to bitsbytrippin.io I'm gonna make a separate 
link post and I will post the settings that I have. Now, if you if we open this up, if we just edit this and let it notepad, you can notepad plus plus, you can take a look at what this looks like and you'll see how it's passing the values or, or it's gonna import the values. And essentially the tool is able to read in this XML. So we're gonna import the max settings. Now you can see all the bold settings here are what it took from that change. So on this tool, it's highlighting in bold what was changed. You can see a lot of default that were not changed, but those are the main components that were changed. Let's do a quick test here that I have set for if, we're, if I was doing eTash. So we'll let this go. We'll try it on both on Phoenix Miner 2. And there we are at 50.6 mega hash right now. We're at 244 now, or 230. So we shaved off about, about 40 watts. We can take more off of this. This is just some initial testing I've done. I'm almost at 51 mega hash right now uh, with these settings. We're showing about, about 166 to the card, but we're also using PCIe power. So your delta is your fit minus 55 from that 240 right and then the delta between the 166 watts that you're seeing in your power and your uh any of the power tools that you're using is the pcie the supporting power that's coming off the board to the pcie so we're, we're talking about 40 to 50 watts being supported by the pcie plus the 160 on the card plus the 55 watts on the motherboard now with multiple gpus that 55 stays pretty current but your pcie value will be for each riser that you're using anywhere from 35 watts to 50 watts power cost on each of your risers and then you got your card wattage and that gives you your total for your whole system and right there's 2248 so we're at almost 2250 on xmr on a vega 56 or a vega 64 rather and by comparison to some of the old ways that you had to go through and go through the power tables and you had to change registry settings you had to do a lot of changes to the car you know to the os to set it up to be able to you know, have a certain driver you had a blockchain driver mode like all of those things you don't have to do anymore you can kind of come in here make some you know import some settings like this now set your values and go 27 at 195 so we're on the same power uh but with these timings uh, actually with these timings we're getting a pretty high we're getting an increase at least in that series of algo that it was just testing we'll see if it holds but right now on this vega 64 we're getting 34 mega hash on ethereum on ravencoin all right there's a, a hash order that just restarted with a lot higher a little harder round let's see what it drops down to yeah see now that's 24 we had a peak as 34. i think going through a series of, of just testing for this for a little bit but i never seen an observed amount higher than 27.2 so we're at 85.7 watts on card on an rx card right now 29. No, I mean, I see you clicking stuff every restart. Yes, so you have to have this as part of the command line on the startup. We'll let that run for a second, see if it's stable. So if you're in Windows, and like, let's say you're clicking your miner and you're keeping it on there, or you've included it at your bat file to start your miner in Windows on startup, or if you're running Hive OS or Simple Mining OS or any other OS. In like Simple Mining, there's on the advanced like overclocking tab, there's a switch now on Simple Mining that you click over to say advance and you'll put your strap setting or the, those timing settings in there. So each time it restarts, it's gonna apply those on startup.